if more and more Americans are losing trust in Asians, then what can you actually do about it? Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here, a new shocking survey, essentially in short, and I'll pop up the numbers right here, has revealed that Americans are losing trust in their fellow Asian Americans. They think that they are more responsible for COVID and they're more loyal to their country of origin. Man, it's got a lot of people riled up and a lot of different emotions are flying around. David. Oh man, you saw a crazy range of responses on Reddit, you know, Twitter, blog posts. I would say this, guys, uh, you know, it's crazy to me how many people needed a survey to start freaking out. Because I was like, I don't know if the attacks didn't make you worried, but uh, it didn't shock me. Well, I think people are now thinking like, oh my gosh, if the crazy people on the street don't like us and these people who pick up the phone and take this survey don't like us, gosh, we're in trouble. Right, people hey, are drawing yeah. a distinction between the D-gens on the street attacking yeah. old women and like a survey crowd. Yeah. They're thinking a survey, a guy who picks up a phone and takes a survey could be like at Billy Bob's Honky Tonk or even like a military general or something. They're thinking more like older white people taking a survey at the Mall of America in Minnesota. Listen, we wanna acknowledge that this is troubling for a lot of people and nobody wanted to see the survey come out. However, it is true and it's very revealing. So we gotta just talk about it. We gotta talk about who did they pull for the survey? What does that mean? And also what can you do about it? Because I think that's the big question right here. And also, should Asians be freaking out on the internet? I don't even know if they're freaking out in real life, but on the internet, they're freaking out. So we're gonna break it down from the micro, mid, the macro, but real quick, Let's get into the polling itself. Okay, so the polling itself, right? I mean, listen, surveys are not always accurate as we've seen in past elections. I mean, there were surveys who said Hillary Clinton had a 99% chance of winning. She clearly didn't win. So also, I do think who they polled is really important and how they polled. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's similar to Nielsen box tops, you know, for TV sets. Like those give very skewed ratings sometimes because they have to be put in specific households right. that will accept the Nielsen box. Right, right, right. Not just everybody's TV is being tracked. You have to agree to it. So if you're a person who gets agreed to a survey, then you probably wa maybe watch more TV. I don't know. So it's a little bit skewed. I, I, I would say in my opinion, it's probably more representative to be honest though. And this is the part that is alarming because I do want to give some points to the people who are ultra alarmed by this. Andrew, it's probably more representative of a middle America voting population. Yeah. That, I really do yeah. think that. I, I don't have the stats, but I truly think no, that that's And voting population, we're not just saying it's one race, by the way, guys. Voting is just more of an I'm almost age thing. Like, older people vote more. Oh, way more. It's it not even close. Dude, if you polled just 20-year-olds hey. in America, trust me, the stats and, and results would be different. To be honest, it's probably a little bit more of the generation and I'm not saying that everybody feels this way or that way. It kind of is like locked into like the old Pearl Harbor days. Influenced by it, perhaps. No, yes. Listen, guys, if people are blaming Asian looking people, obviously specifically Chinese, but people, everybody kind of gets lumped into Chinese for COVID, right? And they view that as like an attack, right? Some people do, right? Uh, they're gonna view that as similar to like Pearl Harbor, but they're like already had that like potential because they, that anger was from the old days. Mm -hmm. And it's almost just like was dormant until something catalytic like reactivates it. I mean, you can even tell by how Pearl Harbor was trending during the FIFA uh, US women's versus uh, women's Japan game match. Uh, 2015, 2015. Right? Yeah, that was and the World Cup. There was like a whole bunch of tweets about Pearl Harbor. Anyway, that was from old people and young yeah, people. I so mean, I think some people are trolling, but to, whatever. To, there's some parts of the country guys that feel very, very different than the coastlines. Like, yeah like really different, like coaching on what you can or cannot say. But I also don't think surveys determine how people are gonna treat you in person. I do think these are internal feelings. These are a private conversation. A lot of people have different feelings when they talk in private, but when they are out in society, they might act differently. So I'm not saying it, it doesn't mean anything, but it, you know. And it also just depends on your exposure to these precincts. That's why I think national studies in an increasingly fragmented America have different tastes and di watch different shows. National studies, even though they might be true, they could mean less in terms of actual application. And that leads us to our first point, Andrew. In the micro sense of life, mm -hmm. you're like an ant in an ant colony, an ant colony in a cul-de-sac, a cul-de-sac in a city, a city in like a, a, a district, mm -hmm. and you, or you could be a bird looking down at the district. Right, you have all right, these like, different like You have viewpoints. all these different viewpoints, all the way from an ant to like 
a cat that's just stuck in a house and that's its world to a dog that roams a neighborhood to like all the way to be a, a, a gigantic bird that soars over everything. Well, do you mean like during a storm, if you're the ant, it's gonna suck extra bad versus if you're the cat or the dog. Right, and so everybody's exposure, even within a reality that is happening to everybody is completely different. Your perspective, your eyes just see different things. No, I literally cannot tell you how much to care because I don't know your life because it really, really depends. Some people are in industries where, you know, they're studying, they're, uh, Chinese student from China and they're studying nuclear biology and obviously it's gonna like, be an issue. It's it is no, that's a fact. Like you this, gotta be worried about yeah. your like uh, student visa getting but, extended. But but if you're just trying to take care of your dog, work your job, maybe you work at this job, you're outside of this macro thing. Right. I mean, if you're an Asian in the military, it may you may feel some extra comments. And, and but if you're working at like Google, you might not feel anything. Yeah. If anything, people are only gonna be like sympathetic to the hate that somebody who looks like you is getting in another part of town. Yeah. So it just goes to show you guys, your micro exposure to a macro trend is very, very different. You know, Andrew, as the stock market was going up the previous two years, obviously this past year has been really choppy. Some people still lost money because they still uh, bought high and sold yeah. low every time. Like even in an uptrend, it depends on how you play but the game. Back in 2008, when you just first started working, you had your first job, the stock market crash didn't affect you because you didn't have any money in the market. Yeah, I remember being at work and everybody else was freaking out because their 401k and their Ross were just like going to way super declining because the tech bubble popped. I didn't even care. So it kind of goes to show you the same situation that some Asians are in, where some Asians are like, yeah, theoretically, I'm aware of this macro trend, but I don't care because I don't feel impacted. That's how I was yeah. about the stock market. Obviously, nowadays, in 2022, I feel a lot different. I'm yeah. like, man, hey, what's going but, on? But maybe the people around you and the Americans that you know are nice, and you really don't feel it. That's completely possible as well. Right. It, it, like I said, it depends on what even precinct of a district okay. you're in, and then even, like, do you live on that hill or that hill? All right, so moving to the mid... If you are worried about this at all, and this is alarming to you, what can you do? I mean, I think that the first thing you could do is move to a more comfortable situation geographically. That's gonna affect the 30 to 150 people around you. Most people's reality is driven by just simply 30 to 150 people. Literally, their entire reality in terms of IRL in real life. So for example, you know what's really interesting, Andrew? We grew up on the border town. Like we grew up right on this one strip that where if you went left, it was a very uh, blue, like in terms of like democratic, almost like, you know, almost like a, a inner city type vibe. And if you would have went to the right, uh, it was almost like a ultra Republican, like Tennessee type vibe. Right. So you could have, because why? If you guys know, Washington's kind of like that. It could like switch night and day. So on. so we could have gone to the red Costco or the blue Costco. Yeah. So it, I, I've seen it on both sides. I mean, like you know, I wouldn't want to live in either, yeah. to be honest, but. Um, so yeah, moving is one thing and you don't even have to move uh, to a different state. It could be across town or uh, this is a less popular solution on the internet. You could feel bad and try to cater extra hard to regain trust, you know, throw up American flags, do this, bake pies, do all these things that are typically American to show uh, this American population. Be like, hey guys, I'm I'm one of you. I'm down with the team. Uh, so there's no question in their mind. Right, 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 right. And this is actually a plan that a lot of people run. Obviously, some people call these people boba liberals, whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I'm not saying I feel fully buying into those political ideologies. I always know the terms. But I would say that a lot more people in regular life do the pandering style, but they just don't talk about it on Twitter because like ideologically, you know, certain people are gonna come for them because they're gonna be like, what do you mean? We gotta wear American yeah. flags, blah, 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 blah. But it is probably pretty effective. I actually think that a lot of people low key do this stuff, but they don't even think about it because in their mind, it's just part of living in America is slightly pandering to an extent but we'll get into that later anyways um the third option is man if you can get strong get financially secure um you know get fit and just take care of your family and live your own life you actually may not be as affected from this yeah. macro survey i agree with you i mean it's easy as looking at it quantitatively so let's say for example uh, mistrust of Asians jumps from like 20% to 30%. I believe that's what the study said. Um, but your strength level is 80%. You are still not going to be like uh, the prejudice or the mistrust of you is still not even touching your leverage. Yeah. Whether that's like how on point you are taking care of your own life, your loved ones, your parents, your, your, your family that you have underneath you. Like if you're stronger, no matter how bad it gets, 
you're gonna be pretty much like yeah. hedged and like covered if against you it. are a strong larger boat then the storm that's coming will affect you less you will feel it everybody will be affected but you're not gonna be one of those boats that's gonna be flying up in the waves and right, getting right. tossed and turned and yeah, everything. Yeah, I don't think any boat likes turbulence, any plane likes turbulence, but if you're a plane that's designed to handle a heavy volume of yeah. turbulence and you'll be okay, then you're gonna make it through and, and not and be scared. One mindset I would like people to get out of, and so I saw some of these comments on the internet where they're like, oh my gosh, I, I just feel like that they were using this survey to kind of come up for come up with excuses for their own life like oh this explains why my life is this way and my life is that way and i don't feel comfortable i'm like guys this is just a survey that just came out your life has always been your life and the people you've met have always been the people you met like this survey is even though it's a real number it's not real life that's what i'm trying to tell you right right i mean absolutely i think that those people they could have been put in a situation where um you know, they didn't even have a lot of options in the micro, but definitely they're conflating the macro environment with like personal individual yeah. agency. And it's not that there's no correlation, but there is no direct, direct causation. Yeah. Like we said earlier, the micro application can look so different than the big tidal wave trend. All right, David, moving on to the macro. Um, my macro takeaway here is, uh, yes, although distrust is rising amongst Asian Americans uh, on how Americans view them, I actually think Americans in general are just distrusting everybody more. Yeah. Like, I just think distrust in America is at an all time high in general. I don't even think the middle class white American trusts the white billionaire as much as they used to. I think they used to. Yeah, but I don't think they trust them as much anymore. Yeah, because I think there's just a lot just of, uh, there's a lot of bad uh, identity warfare and identity warfare is not just across ethnic lines or uh, ethno-cultural lines. It's uh, it's socio this and there's so much intersectionality and hyphenated this and this and this. And um, I mean, that's just where we are at as a society right now. I don't wish it was that way, but obviously as a social commentary, as a comedian, that's like where it is at to mm -hmm. keep it real. I mean, I think ultimately, I think you got to understand your life and how does your life interface with larger trends? For example, Andrew, if you're in Gen Z right now, people are watching more anime, more K-pop, more K-dramas, more Asian content, eating more Asian foods than they ever have. Mm -hmm. However, the older boomer generation, and like I said, I'm not, you know, don't mean this to be derogatory. And this it's is just, not a blanket It's just thing. any funny way to put it. The Pearl Harbor generation, they might be like soaring at 20%, even more, even more than the study. And then that's like getting cut down to 11 because you're averaging it out with the people who almost have a, a positive view on Asians, mm -hmm. you know? so. One thing I've noticed, and if you study statistics and like demographic breakdowns and pools, they can be so divergent. So when you get a national picture, it doesn't really give you a good answer unless you break down the micro analytics. And we don't have the micro analytics. Yeah, one last thing from me is that, you know, uh, there was a time in America when immigrants would come to America and uh, consciously serve and cater more to Americans. I do think that time is decreasing. Like there is less and less immigrants coming over running that same plan of just catering to the American population. Now they can kind of do their own thing. There's enough immigrants right. and Asians well, here a, uh, where they can land here and run their own business and they don't have to be like, oh, hey, Mr. Johnson, yeah, thank you. Thanks right, for coming. Right. I would compare it a little bit more to the situation in Canada and Australia where it was more of a stained glass rather than a fondue. And I do understand and I do empathize with some people who's like, oh my gosh, Mr. Ping, like you used to always uh, have the, fi the my favorite ducks ready on Thursday, and now your son is like overcharging my son for Yeezys and Supreme. You know what I mean? Like he, he can't understand it. Mr. Ping's like, hey man, it's just the natural curve. I'm glad my son doesn't have to do what I do, but you know, I'll still get, get it ready for you. I think there's just a lot of change going on in America and things like this survey just show that there's a lot of like growing pains with it, you know? And yes, there is, gonna need to be concerted efforts to kind of bring people together a little bit more you know obviously like i'm all for asian stuff of course but i understand how that can be jarring for i guess the rest of americans you know and and americans in the right survey. right right because they're like i i kind of miss the nice white yeah. fondue yeah. that all the everybody else would have to be melted into like, versus uh this new like chopped greek salad thing you know where everything's like with the feta and the olive and it's kind of weird to me 
Well, that chop suey spot closed down after 30 years and turned into a hot pot restaurant with a whole bunch of the University of Ohio students. So I don't know. Maybe I'll be skipping on that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking about trying that chuan chuan or the mala shanguo, but um, haven't got around to doing it quite yet. Do miss pings. Who are these skinny Asian guys in suits just tearing up the stage at the Grammys? This sure is a different look for pop stars. Guys, the world is changing. I get it. And, and you know, especially these people, they like watch TV and they have landlines. Like what if this survey was done with landlines? That's like a very specific population. Nobody has landlines anymore. Anyways. I mean, guys, let us know what you think of the survey. What does it mean? Is it legitimate? Is it not legitimate? I mean, uh, my answer is obviously there's some legitimacy to it, but the application is, you know, very individualistic. And uh, I do think obviously it's something to keep our eye on. Obviously, if this trend were to extrapolate year in and year out, eventually, I do think the macro would be really felt in the micro. I think some people are feeling it right now. Like I said, we have previous videos addressing that and how to keep those people safe as much as possible. And I do think the people who are not immediately affected by it right now in their little like ant colony, it's happening three ant colonies over, they do, they should think about it. But I can't force anybody to because I understand human nature. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. We're going to wrap it up there. You guys let us know in the comments down below. Is this an alarming survey or not? What do you think and what can you do? Guys, we are the Hot Pop Boys, and thank you for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.